Welcome to episode 34 of The Brainstorm. And that's right, we're talking Tesla energy storage. Just kidding. Nick, all about the Vision Pro. You've got him on the face. What's the, what is your reaction? I know you were very negative on it. Have been, we've seen some positive reviews. First person experience, what's it like? Yeah. Also, you so, can take it off. I can't see okay, the vision right, pastor okay. is not good. Yeah. All right. That that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> They're quite heavy, as uh, as the reviews have uh, stated. Um, you know, I think in in using it a bit, uh, and thanks to uh, Ben Boxer, our new marketing associate, he is actually the one who brought this in. He he waited in line at five a.m. to get a pair. Um, so we really appreciate that. It's been pretty fun to play around with them. I think um, maybe some of my suspicions were confirmed, um, but I also think some of the positives that have been floating out there, uh, we can also confirm. I think, you know, Apple has something special in the eye tracking. Um, I think, you know, what they've been able to do with Fidelity um, is, you know, quite compelling. But at the end of the day, this is still very much a VR headset. Um, and doesn't alleviate a lot of the common issues we see with VR. One, you know, I think they they have a bad framing or, you know, I, I think that the spatial computing, this is the next generation, this is the future. I don't know that they've actually nailed that in my experience with the, the device. So that framing well, that people me? are going out there with. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Was first just like most common things I've heard you complain about in the past with not Apple, just broadly speaking. Did it make you nauseous? I don't know that I can say I used it long enough to make me feel nauseous. Also, there aren't true VR experiences at, that you would find on you know the Meta Quest, right? So there is limitations to what the device is capable of, or you know what the device has. Uh, functionality to do today just because there aren't a lot of true VR applications on the device. This is very much, you know, it's it's a different device in that I don't think they wanted something that was focused on gaming, which is a huge use case for VR today. And that's, you know, full immersion gaming, you're able to move around a bit in your room and and, and capture all of that motion. This doesn't have that to the same extent that I've felt with other devices. So the motion sickness, the the nausea, I haven't come across an experience that would give me that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I just think there's, you know, limitations in, in kind of the experiences available on the app today, which maybe says something about its capabilities to handle that type of rendering. Um, you know, honestly, I wasn't as blown away as I think other people have, uh, you know, walked away from the experience being. Yeah, because I would say on our brainstorm, we had someone just saying how profound an experience it was to interact without a keyboard and mouse. And from a friend, you know, he said he had a friend who tested it and was like so blown away by the immersion that, you know, you take it off and you're like, oh, this is this is what the real world looks like. Yeah, my, I, I just have to question if any of those people you just talked about have used VR in the past. Like there is nothing remarkable about the device. In my opinion, the eye tracking is probably the best feature, but is it something that, you know, meta can't copy and integrate into their next device? I highly doubt that. Right. I, I think everyone is losing their minds a bit because this is Apple and this is Apple's, you know, most recent hardware and it, and they don't typically step out of, you know, their way to make new hardware that, you know, is, isn't something that they haven't perfected. This is not a perfect device by any means. There is plenty that I could, you know, list for why you shouldn't buy this or, you know, why you should wait for the next generation. I can see where they're going with it. I can understand that they want this to feel like you're, you're not truly in VR and that you're just overlaying digital items and, and, and features around you. 
Um, so it's, it's full immersion in a sense, but it's also, I'm still connected to the real world. That's why they embedded the eyesight feature. That's why they have, you know, a ton of, uh, fidelity and, and pass through ability, but it's, it's not anywhere close to where it needs to be to truly have a device that, you know, I think reaches the mass market and everyone in the comments is going to say that's, that, that wasn't their intent. This is, you know, it's labeled a pro. So it's, it's specifically meant for a niche audience and maybe developers and early users. But the way that it's being reviewed is it's, you know, groundbreaking in its, in its abilities. And I just didn't get that sense. I would much rather have a meta quest three and be able to play the games that are, you know, uh, available on that, then have four different 75 inch screens floating around me at all times. Like, I don't know that that is uh, a true use case, more so just a novelty because of everything you have to do to, you know, accompany that. Wait, so Nick, you're, I get that. And I get what you're saying, but you're saying, let's say five years from now, you don't think that the price comes down to a point where this is used widely or you don't think the performance improves enough that it's useful. Um, like taking that it is the Vision Pro first step, eye tracking demo, get developers on board, right? It sounds like YouTube might be developing an app. Um, you know, there's people who've put out theoretical apps that look pretty cool. You don't think in five years time this develops to a price for performance level that's widely acceptable? I think it will. I, I don't doubt that it won't, right? I think they could probably shed a few thousand dollars just by, you know, getting rid of eyesight and the external features of the device and maybe, you know, getting rid of the titanium casing and going with something that's plastic. So I think there's trade-offs they made that, you know, they, you know, built in expenses that probably didn't need to be there. My concern is more, is the use case that they're going after, which is productivity and uh, connection. Is that really what we are hoping VR is, right? Like if, if the killer app for VR is just seven floating screens that I can, you know, change the size of, and it's still just 2d interaction. I will be very upset, <laughs> right? That's not what was it's promised like a- to us in all of these sci-fi books I've been reading since I was a kid, right? It's supposed to be this metaverse experience, this full immersion. And it, it's, it's something that I contemplate a lot because I go back and forth with maybe full immersion is not going to take off in the way that we've been told in, you know, sci-fi, right? Maybe it's not what uh, the use case is. Maybe Apple is right. Maybe it it is productivity lift, but I would truly be sad as, you know, an optimist, uh, optimist for, for VR and, and technology. If that's kind of the reason we're wearing these devices for six hours a day. That's right. You want Jarvis more than you want like the old, was it Best Buy or Circuit City commercials where they just walk everywhere and there's a TV? Right. I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would say I'm uh, overall under, It's it was underwhelming as an experience. I'm hopeful for next well, generation. All right, all right. Let's, let's and... go more concrete. Top, what was your most surprised positive and most surprised negative experience having used it? The eye tracking is very good, right? It, it is not as intuitive as I would think, uh, but it is very good, right? When you're taught to, you know, learn how to type, you're not, you're not hoping that for the rest of your life, you have to look at the individual keys for every single word you're going to type out. You're actually taught to try to memorize, you know, the hand placement so that you can type without looking and and stare at your screen. This is the polar opposite of that, right? In in actuality, you have to look at each individual key, kind of, you know, move around but like can, this. Can you just talk? To, to, can't you just talk? You can talk. Yeah. And so that, okay, Sam, this is the perfect segue into, I think, Meta's earnings, voice as a potential UI. I think before we get to full immersion, before we get to, you know, true VR experiences, 
there needs to be a um, revolution in UI. And I think voice might be the path that many choose because of the advancements we've seen with generative AI. I think, you know, these digital assistants, the series, the Alexas of the world, if you're able to embed actual functionality into them so that, you know, they're powered by a large language model or powered by a large action model, voice as a, a way to communicate and way to interact with our digital, um, you know, the digital world is going to be extremely powerful. Wow, this is this is a full circle, Nick. I remember probably five years ago on the on the Amazon uh, Amazon brainstorm days. Yep, it was. Uh, it's it's been a long dream of mine that smart speakers are actually smart. But I think we now have the actual underlying models to support you know real utility and functionality out of these digital assistants. It's it's going to be a big project for. Myself and Andrew Kim this quarter, probably this first half of the year, to really understand what is the opportunity for a digital assistant. I use the example: what what would you pay, or what would you be willing to give up to have you know Tony Stark's Jarvis readily available, embedded in your watch or your AirPods or whatever device you you hold closest to you? What would you pay to have you know the ability to ask a question around an upcoming vacation and have everything planned out for you, paid for you within seconds, as soon as you confirm? That's kind well, of forget, the future I think Just, is going to happen before we get to these VR and metaverse experiences everyone seems to be reinvigorated on because of the Vision Pro. I think you start even more basic. You just go to AI assistants that each, my Calendly, and your Calendly, and they fight it out, and they figure out when we can actually schedule a call. But wait, Nick, yeah. I don't want you—I don't want to let you off the hook. Eye tracking—that was the biggest positive surprise, biggest positive negative surprise. surprise for the, yeah, biggest negative surprise the, for the Vision Pro. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of reviews that's you know stated when you're looking at the digital displays, so if you have a Safari browser open, the pass-through, so the, the real world that surrounds it, if you've chosen to, to have that, instead of just like a full immerse, you can you know, be on the moon, you can be in the Sahara Desert, you, know, you can choose different options, but you can also just be in the room you're in. That wasn't as clear as I had expected it to be. So the clarity, the mm -hmm. fidelity of the actual pass-through was slightly better than what I've experienced in other VR headsets, but it wasn't a step function better than uh, other VR headsets, in my opinion. A lot of people have said, wow, you can actually walk around. And I've seen you know, some people playing ping pong with it. People are sitting in Times Square with it. To me, I would never choose to do any of that because it does not look real. It is a bit grainy. It's a bit uh, you know, the, the clarity is just not there in the way that I thought it would be. Got it. All right. So then what did Zuck say on Meta's earnings call? Yeah. So Zuck said essentially what I just went on a tangent about, which was, mm -hmm. we think that there's a real opportunity in digital assistance embedded in smart glasses before there is a real opportunity in overlaying or augmented reality in glasses. So if you think about, and people may comment on this, how much we talk about the Ray-Bans meta glasses. Well, I was going to say um, other people a, in the office just got some. Yes. Right? No, I, we I, have, I we have a few a adopters now. Yeah. 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 We have a few adopters. There's people just walking around in sunglasses during the day because like me, they didn't get the the clear lenses. They just got sunglasses, but you know they're still wearing them in an office where you probably don't need to have sunglasses on. But it's because you know you can use it as a speaker for meetings. You can you know there's a lot of just a day to day function of it that I think works. Um, but you know he essentially stated in their last earnings, you know we see a real opportunity to embed a digital assistant into hardware before we see a real opportunity to embed augmented reality or digital displays in a pair of glasses in that the technology needed to have a truly compelling experience where I'm wearing that same meta Ray-Ban glass, uh, you know, the glasses, and I'm now seeing kind of the same digital overlay that Apple has in their vision pro 
that's further out than they uh, you know, probably originally expected. And that, you know, if they're able to create more compelling use cases for their digital assistant, have it be multimodal, have it carry out functionality for you, like I was just talking about in a pair of glasses, there's a real opportunity to do something special there. And I couldn't agree more. I think that is one of the most compelling stories in tech that really isn't even getting talked about yet. Like everyone is so focused on the Vision Pro and a bunch of other stuff that they're kind of, this is like a Trojan horse of, you know, how is, how are a day-to-day consumers going to be interacting with large language models and kind of this recent wave of AI that's just being, I think, completely passed over. Nice. I mean, I feel like we can leave it there. Do you have other, uh, if, you, if you don't have anything else, I'll, I'll take over and just say a few few things. No, please close it out. I feel like I've, I've talked too much this episode. <laughs> well, I was, uh, what I was going to say is, I, you know, I made the joke about Tesla uh, stationary energy storage, but we actually did include it. If people want to see our thoughts on it, uh, it is in last year's Tesla open source model. You can see the assumptions we put in there. Uh, give us feedback on that. We're, you know, we update that annually and and put it out there. So just because we didn't talk about it on the brainstorm doesn't mean we're not thinking about it. Uh, what else? And maybe we should just we should end with oh if big you ideas. Do have big yeah, ideas. big ideas. There's a lot of topics in there that came to out get through last week. Did that come out last week? Did we talk yes. about it? I don't think we talked about it, but right, yeah, well, everyone, everyone take a look at it. big ideas. And then if you do have other questions or if you go through big ideas and you have questions and topics you want to hear us talk about, let us know. Let us know. That's true. Everyone download big ideas, ask questions. We'll get the relevant people to answer them. And maybe we just do a, you know, a, a little AMA action. I think that's great. All, All right. right. We'll see everyone. Back to the metaverse, Sam. Back to the metaverse. (laughs) Yeah. You can unplug from the world.